Welcome everybody, this is Brother Meat here. Today we are doing a series of videos to talk about Oracles, a class that has just recently become brought to my attention. For those of you who have never played an Oracle before, this uh, to me feels like, if you've ever played Neverwinter Nights 2, a favored soul, a spontaneous cleric type caster, which means you have limited spell picks, kind of like a sorcerer does to a wizard, the favored soul, or in this case Oracle, does to a cleric. Okay? It has decent BAB progression, it's the middle ground one, so you get a 15 BAB by the end of the build. You also have access to a bunch of cleric spells, again, multiple times a day. So it's going to be key and important to pick the right ones. Now, the things that it has going for it are simple weapons, light armor, um, and medium armor, which is kind of nice. Uh, so again, will feel like a cleric. Now, of course, you want to get something like martial weapon proficiency or something else that allows you to um, access, if you will, better uh, weapon choices because simple weapons, let's just face it, aren't as amazing as you'd think. There's still plenty of good choices. I'm still a fan of the dagger, especially if you're going for a deck space build, which I'll show you tomorrow. Uh, but let's just pick a, a good clerical looking type person and we'll run into it. Now, some of the things that you need to know about Oracle is uh, the type of class or subclasses that they have access to. So you have to make that decision. You need to know what type of mystery to pick. There's always one that you get to pick per Oracle. Uh, one mystery is hidden behind a subclass, no less. We'll, so we'll show you that one actually first. So you need to be an elf right away for that one. So let's actually just do that. Go class, go oracle, and you'll see oracle, the base, which is one of my favorites. Uh, Seeker, which I'm not as fond of, which I'll show you here in a mo. Uh, but by and large, it really lackluster, especially since it only gets a few of its uh, revelations. These are things that are associated with the mystery that you pick. Uh, an Ancient Lore Keeper, which is a uh, favorite of mine, but to do it, you have to be an elf. Notice that it is available. If I had literally went to a race that was not elf, this is the downside. You literally can't pick. Oops, there you go. Oh my, we broke the game. That's amazing. This one requires you to actually be an elf. There it is. Okay. Now it works like it should. Uh, downside of this is, is if I do this, where I literally pick, and then if I switch back, say, oh no, I wanted to do that when I be an elf, and then I go back here to Oracle, it doesn't unlock it. Now maybe if I skip back and forth, there we go. Okay, so it does now. Okay, good. Uh, this Ancient Lord Keeper is interesting to me for a variety of reasons. One, it has access to the Time Mystery. Now that one, um, if I go back one here, These are the mysteries that you have access to as the other oracle types. Time mysteries locked behind Ancient Lore Keeper. If you right click this, you can actually see uh, some tooltip pop up stuff. Uh, notice that it should give you access to class skills, which means a green check mark next to uh, two different class skills athletics and mobility in this case. And each of these guys is different perception, mobility, uh, perception, knowledge, arcana, uh, athletics, mobility again, and athletics, Lord Nature. Now, some of these work, some of these don't. I think Time Mystery is one of the ones that is busted. Uh, so again, keep an eye out for that. It's not that big a deal, but if you were like banking on that extra plus three to your mobility check, for instance, sometimes that's important. So on Dex Base Build, I can see that being useful. So kind of sucks when they don't give you the class skills like they say they do. Uh, notice all these have revelations associated with them. These looks listed here. Most are 10 different choices to pick from. Uh, there's like one of them that has nine. Having said that, so these are basically spell-like abilities or feats or things of that nature that basically buff your character in some way, shape, or form. You have access, as whether you're a mystery or a ancient lord keeper or the regular oracle, you have access to six of them. To get all ten or all nine, you have to burn extra feats to get them. So that's under extra revelations, which you'll have access to once you pick oracle as one of your classes. That's nice. Those are not bad uh, uses of things, but again, I would not probably burn four feats just to get all ten of these things. Some of these are good, some of these are kind of meh, and again as I go through each one of these with different builds I will show you the ones that I would say these are must-haves, these are solid choices, and these are kind of like who gives a shit. Time Mystery for example, the one that we're gonna pick now, again only available for the Ancient Lore Keeper, um, an elf at that, uh, gets access to Aging Touch, Erase from Time, Momentary Glimpse, Rewind Time, Knowledge of the Ages, Speed or Slow Time, Temporal Clarity, Time Flicker, Time Hop, Time Sight. Now of these 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, just making sure. Now of these 10, 6 you're definitely going to grab if you go all the way at least to level 19. 
And then there's probably one or two extras that you definitely want as well. The, the few that I found lackluster were Knowledge of the Ages. This is the one that literally, when you do a Knowledge Skill Check, whether it's Lore, or sorry, Knowledge Arcana, or Knowledge World, um, if you fail the check, it re-rolls it and gives you a bonus based on your Charisma, which is your casting stat for this class. That's something, I guess, but by and large, those Knowledge Checks I find are more useful when you're uh, uh, not fighting, for instance, and you're in the open world. And I scum save those anyway, so if you're going to do that, this is kind of who cares. I would not burn a feet is my point to get it. Uh, same with things like uh, Momentary Glimpse. This one's decent. It's like a plus two bonus to your attack bonus, your skill check, your um, saving throws, and your armor class, I want to say, but only for like one round. You get multiple times a day you can use it, but it's only for one round. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I, mean, I guess. I mean, it's there. It's free. If you're going to pick it, I mean, I'm not going to say no to it. But if I'm going to burn a feed on it, it's going to have to do more than just that. Rewind time, another one that is kind of hit or miss for me. I, I could see doing without it. But having said that, there are some useful things in here. This one gives you multiple toggles. And those toggles are very similar to like what you do for the Knowledge of Ages. Where literally you get an extra re-roll. The extra re-roll, though, is for an attack roll, for a saving throw, for a spell penetration check. Literally, that's pretty badass. And again, you can see the flavor here that's associated with these rolls. Initiative, I think, is even one of them. But by and large, it's still kind of, yeah. And again, it's fiddly, and I'm not a fan. I'm not saying it's not good. It's just not something that I'll probably work my way into a build. So that's three right there that I would get rid of of the time mystery itself. Uh, time hop is basically dimension door, multiple uses a day. You can even take teammates with you. However, it takes more uses, like double the uses, to take more than one person with you. Uh, so that's literally um, dimension door for free. Time Sight, if I remember quickly, uh, this one is a combination of things. So at lower levels, it's basically True Sight. Uh, I think you can pick this up at level 11. Uh, and it literally allows you to multiple times a day to activate for one minute increments based on your Oracle level. So if you want 20 levels of Oracle, you can use it 20 times a day for one minute increments, which means you can leave it on for the full 20 minutes or you can literally activate it for a fight, which I like. So I can literally click it, shut it right back off, and it's, it gives me my buff for one minute. I like that. I like those type of uh, clickables way better than toggles that just burn all the way through 20 minutes of use or spells that use 20 minutes of time where you're only going to fight for 5 minutes of that time. That's a wasted spell in my opinion. So this is kind of nice. And then when it gets higher level, I want to say level 18, it unlocks the ability to be the equivalent of Foresight, which literally does both of them. When you click it once and shut it right back off again, for one minute you have not only True Sight, which means Ignoring concealment, you know, blur, displacement, you know, scene viz, kind of uh, on crack kind of spell. And then it gives you foresight, which makes you immune to being flat-footed. And a plus two bonus to not only your armor class, insight bonus to your armor class, but also a plus two insight bonus to your reflex saves. Amazing spell. And again, spell-like ability for you. So that's pretty nice. And again, pick that one up as soon as you can. Uh, time Flicker, if this is the one I think it is, this is one that, uh, again, two different uses for it. One, it starts off basically being Blur, but again, as a clickable. You can use it for as many minutes as you have levels of Oracle, but you have to use it in one minute increments. Again, it's a toggle, I believe, so you can leave it on, but why do that? Just activate it, shut it right back off again, and now you have a minute worth of Blur. That's a 20% chance to miss you. Later on, I forget what level, like 7, I think it upgrades, where literally Time Flicker becomes or gives you another clickable, and that's Displacement. But just like Displacement is only good uh, as a spell for like one round per caster level, same with this one. Every click is only one round of, of Displacement. So that one's kind of less useful, in my opinion. But having said that, I'll still use it, because again, 50% chance to miss me for one round of combat, sometimes you need that shit. So I'm just saying, that's that's not bad. Uh, temporal Clarity. Uh, let's see. This one... I believe is the one I take at level one. This is the one that I believe it uh, does. Um, uh, I have to work off memory here. This one is a, a bonus to like your initiative checks, and what it does is basically re-rolls them for you. Now I can't prove that this works. Is the downside uh, at earliest levels it will literally re-roll your initiative check twice, taking the best one is the goal here. And then at the higher levels it rolls it like three times, and again taking the best one of those three. So more likely to be higher on the totem pole for initiative rolls, which is nice. And again, I'll totally take that. Uh, the other benefit that it gives it to you, like halfway in your build, like the, around here, it literally activates an ability where um, not only are you going to get your roll twice or, again, later on three times for your initiative check, uh, you always get to act in the surprise round. 
even if you're the one that was surprised. Having said that, if you're surprised, you were not aware of the attack, the bad guys all get their surprise round. You get to act in the surprise round too. However, you're last in the surprise round. But you still get to act, which is always cool. And I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, speed and slow time is basically clickable uh, uh, spell-like abilities for uh, haste or slow multiple times a day. And again, could be used to either boost you and or your team or slow the bad guys obviously down. Uh, they share the same number of clickables a day. So if it's, let's say, three times a day, you can use this three times a day, or this three times a day, or one and two, two and one, however you want to do it. Uh, going up here to Erase from Time, now this is only usable like once or twice a day, so it's kind of, what the hell, but it's that powerful. This is like a fortitude check, and this one is amazing because it literally just erases them from existence. They just, boop, just disappear. And there's a D&D &D spell that we used to use when I used to play D&D &D that did this too, I forget what it's called. Probably a something that was banishment or some such something similar would literally just take them out of your plane of existence for like a minute <laughs> this one here is only based on like a, a round per every two oracle levels or something so literally like the maximum is like one minute and literally just if they fail to check they just whoop in a little ball of light and just disappear and you cannot do anything with them you can even test this on your teammates by the way and it does work however don't try to click on your teammates portrait after that while they're disappeared because it will cause your game to crash just to warn you heads up on that one. Aging Touch, this one's actually actually pretty cool. Not so good earlier levels, but amazing at the later levels. For every two Oracle levels, minimum of a minus one here, uh, it takes a minus away from their strength. So minus one is the minimum, maximum would be obviously minus 10. And this is stackable. It's a touch attack, there is no save, and they literally just take minus 10 strength at the best, you know, level 20 Oracle. Just boop, sorry, you don't have 10 strength now. And it stacks with itself, so you can do it multiple times in a row if you're lucky enough. And I don't know if it'll kill them if it takes them to zero strength. It should. Doesn't mean it will. I mean, it doesn't say anything about it taking them down to only, like, a strength of one or something like that. And again, that's how you would avoid killing them. I don't know that it does that, but I don't care. I, I fought some heavy, hard-hitting trolls, which they had, like, a strength of, like, at least in the 30s or 40s of strength at least and i was hitting him with this uh the main bad guy with this multiple times in a row and he was swinging like a little baby kitten soups funny in my opinion to use that one again more important i'd say later in the build and again if you wanted to get rid of something i suppose i could see getting rid of that one but i would still probably purchase it as a feat at the, at the later part of the build just because it is that much fun and again all the other mysteries are similar in this regard in that they have these cool revelations that you'll have access to the other thing that you get for being an oracle of any kind is you get your own curse. Now the curses, let's give you an example, uh, blackened is a fine one. Notice that the curse itself has a penalty, obviously it's a curse, associated with it. So you've literally hurt yourself in some way, shape, or form. I, I have a penalty to my weapon attack swing. That's a minus four. Why would you even want that? Well, maybe you're a caster type and you don't give a rat's ass about using a weapon. And the penalty lessens over time, which is nice. Notice something else you get though for this. Uh, you literally have um, Burning Hands in your spell list, supposedly. Actually, I found this to actually be a uh, spell-like ability. So, you literally could have cast Burning Hands from your attribute, or from your abilities trait. So that's something. But again, it's, it's free, and again, you're getting mostly cleric spells here, so this is kind of nice to get something that's a non-cleric spell. Notice that we, at higher levels, get other upgrades to your curse. Notice in this case, you get Scorching Rain and Burning Arc added to your spell list. That's something as a cleric you would not have access to. Those are really good spells. Notice here we're getting a Wall of Fire, as well as uh, our weapon penalty is now reduced to a minus two. You're getting to learn to live with your curse, so to speak. Uh, notice here, uh, Delayed Blast Fireball, high level fireball spell. Again, for free, something that clerics don't have access to. So again, pretty damn cool. So if you wanted to make a character that had some decent fire spells, but still had clerical healing or inflict spells, which is the next part of being an oracle, you have the ability to do so. Now, watch this. Here are spells uh, you could pick, uh, so you can be an oracle that heals or you can be an oracle that damages. Either way you go, you basically get free inflict or cure spells at level one, all here at four, six, and again, every even level, eventually you get uh, access to level one spells, two, all the way up to level eight spells. So we're talking cure light all the way, or inflict light all the way to inflict or cure critical and then the aoe versions thereof which is pretty awesome and again when i do my my first video officially showing you a build it'll be this ancient lore keeper time one 
Using Inflict Spells will make him an undead character. We'll monk it up a little bit to get ourselves some extra armor. It'll be tanky as hell, have ridiculous HP, high, high charisma, and the ability to heal itself in combat, as well as damage the bad guys in a circle around it. Amazing uh, combo, in my opinion. But again, I'll show you a, a build for each of the different types of uh, masteries, so you can get a feel for what the Time Mastery has to offer, as well as the other ones as well. I can't really cover all the different curses, but you can really kind of look through them. And again, they're pretty solid and straightforward. They are trippy. They're interesting ones. Wasting one's interesting. Uh, you know, charisma penalty, unless you're trying to intimidate somebody, but you get a bonus against disease because you're basically a, a dying, rotting, undead type person. I toyed with the idea of using this one for my undead build, but I remember we had a lot of overlap. Oh, you get immunity to disease. If you're undead at level one, you're already immune to disease, so who cares? But if you're not, if you didn't have that ability, this is solid, solid upgrade. So immune to sickened of condition, immunity to disease, and then eventually immunity to nausea. Notice there's also like this massive final revelation um, based on, of course, your mystery. Okay, so our mystery for time, it gives us all this stuff here, which is actually a lie that none of this works, but this part does. In addition, you can cast Time Stop once per day as a spell-like ability. So again, another free spell-like ability. And Time Stop is not amazing, so again, if I do a one-level dip out of this to avoid this final revelation, I don't feel like I've missed out on all that much. I miss out on like a Cleric spell, maybe two, but you know, by and large, I don't usually care that much. Uh, but these are very, very interesting, uh, different upgrades. Again, Tongues is a weird one. It's just a solid bonus to your knowledge world, basically. Steadily increasing, increasing. Uh, lame, you start off, of course, with a movement impediment. You can never move. Um, your speed is never reduced due to encumbrance, which, is, again, at the very least, you're always moving at your lame 20 feet or 15 feet. Uh, notice that we get uh, immunity to fatigue. Eventually get immune to exhausted condition. Notice that you have effortless armor on. Your speed is never reduced by armor, which is something. Again, you can wear light and medium armor in these builds. So solid, solid choices. Again, I'm not going to go through them all, but by and large, know that there's something in here for everyone. Some of my favorites are the ones that give you free spells, though, like Haunted, Invisibility, Vanish, uh, uh, Greater Invis, Mass Invis. Again, all good choices. Uh, some give you special uh, built-in abilities like Blind Sight, or if you're deaf, you actually get the Tremor Sense, which I assume is the equivalent of Blind Sight. Uh, and again, just a variety of things that are like, it starts off as being a penalty to perception, then it rapidly turns into a massive bonus to perception. Uh, just weird, weird flavor things that you can add to your character. Now, having said that, these are curses proper for the Oracle. You could still have the Undead Curse, which is a separate curse. That's a trait. Which again, when I make my Ancient Lord Keeper build, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, but... Um, by and large, that's the real difference here. The last thing to talk about before we start going into this further is um, the free spells. You see these runs right here. These are free spells that you get at the various levels, at 2, 4, all the way up to level 18. These are supposed to be spells akin to um, the spells you get for like the Sorcerer Bloodlines, where they give you free spells, uh, a free level 1 spell, then a free level 2 spell. And it's just automatically added to your spell book. All of the mysteries have that. They're always coded, where they literally have the same one every time at level 2, level 4. Time Mystery is the only exception to this rule, one of the reasons I like the Ancient Lore Keeper the best. These ones allow you to pick any wizard spell, wizard sorcerer spell from their spell list at level 0, so a cantrip, but it still casts a level 1 spell. Uh, then level 1 spell, level 2, basically all the way up to level 8 wizard spells. That is literally a laundry list of shit that you get to pick buffs, attack spells, uh, if you wanted to focus, like I, I'm going to make a Necrolord lady with this build tomorrow, and I can use, like, every one of these to get, get well, not most, most of those, to get necromancy spells that the cleric did not have access to. Ray of Enfeeblement, for example, I can get it at level 4. I could get um, Animate Dead, but Animate Dead is on the cleric's list at level 3. Why would I get it as a level 4 wizard? That seems dumb. But again, that's why I'm going to take you through the spell list that you have access to as a uh, oracle. So you can see what the oracles have access to, level 1 through 9. Okay, uh, That's what the rest of this video is going to be about. But again, the Ancient Lore Keeper is the only one that gets to pick their spells. Everyone else has spells hard-coded in there. And some of them are kind of crap. Some of them, again, kind of like the bloodlines for the sorcerers. Some of them are kind of crap. Most of them are good, though, and you will enjoy having them. The downside for me is always when, they, oh, they give you a spell that you're already going to get for free. 
I guess. That frees up some uses, I suppose, but it's one of those where I was going to pick that anyway. Why don't you give me something cool? This one, I can pick something cool. So again, kind of on you. And the fact that, again, you can be a healer or an inflictor of pain is, again, pretty solid choice for me. Uh, just as a quick side note, um, it is just a quick, quick, quick uh, feel for what these all have to offer. Life mystery, if you want to be an excellent healer type, this is your way to go. Because channel energy is one of your revelations. The ability to literally AoE heal or AoE damage undead, just amazing. And of course, a bunch of stuff associated with your heals. Flame mastery, basically if you want to do damage or have more damage, they're fire-based damage, this is the way to go. I would honestly pair that one with the Curse of um, Blackened. There is some overlap there, having said that, because uh, there's some fire spells that they give you access to. Remember, the free spells that they have are hard-coded. So some of the spells like Burning Hands, I think, is in there already. But again, this one was Burning Hands as a spell-like ability. This is going to be an actual spell. Okay, so there's some differences there. But again, like a, a Wall of Fire, you're already going to get that for free. So there is some kind of meh to it. But uh, I would pair those up. They, they synergize well together, in my opinion. And it, I have a really good picture. And I know that's a terrible reason for going this way. But I still have a really good picture for a character that smacks of being a Flame Oracle type person. So this would be perfect for him. Um, but lots of cool stuff, again, associated with this one. Uh, again, if you want to do DPS as a cleric with spells, this would be a solid choice in my opinion. Dragon Mystery. Now this one's weird in that you have to pick a, again, a, a dragon type as far as what element you are. It doesn't make you pick a dragon, you know, like a white dragon versus a blue dragon. It just says, what acid, coal, electric, or fire dragon are you? You just say, oh, I'm a fire dragon. Okay. Literally, you it helps you uh, tie down your spells and some of the, the uh, revelations here, like a breath weapon, is tied to what type of you know, damage you do. You know, are you an acid breather? Are you a cold breather? Kind of thing and elemental protection as well. Again, very much like, if I will say, uh, uh, the dragon, not disciple, like the uh, draconic bloodline from the Magus build, uh, but with obviously much better spell lists. But you, you do have limitations. Again, you don't have access to like, extra damage. You know, for example, the draconic bloodline from Magus or sorcerer for that matter. Let's say you pick the electric dragon type, like the blue dragon they get the inherent plus one damage bonus to all electrical attacks. So if it does 5d6 of damage, electrical dragons will do that 5d6 plus 5. So there's five dice, does it a plus one per die. Uh, so that's nice. The same with acid or cold or fire, depending on what type of dragon you associate with. They don't get that, which seems like a mistake to me, but then I realize we're not getting that many spells that are anything other than, you know, the mundane cleric type spells. So there's some in there that are elemental, like there's some electric attacks every once in a while, there's some fire attacks every once in a while. But honestly, the best way to get some fire attacks is going to be doing something like this. So if I want to do Dragon Mystery, again, Fire Dragon would be pretty damn appealing if I went Blackened again for a curse. Uh, Battle Mystery, on the other hand. Now this bastard here, if, if Time uh, um, Mystery is going to be my undead uh, Necro Lich Bitch uh, one, Battle Mystery is going to be my strength-based, beat the shit out of things till they die build. And this one's going to be fun. You're going to love this one. Uh, just as a quick uh, surprise here. Skill at Arms. Uh, remember, you only have uh, a skill in simple weapons. Getting Skill at Arms at any of your revelations, literally at level 1 you can pick this up. That's Martial Weapon Proficiency. That's what that gives you. Uh, weapon Mastery allows you to take any weapon that you have skill in, which now would be simple and martial weapons. And again, as an elf, I have access to all other ones like the Elven Curve Blade, for instance. Um, with Weapon Mastery, I can literally become weapon-focused in that. But again, that's free. That's not a feat up here being burnt. It's a, a, a revelation being burnt, and I'm happy to do so. So again, this one feels like Battle Cleric, or, or if I will, a better Paladin, because again, access to level 9 Cleric spells, uh, yes please, I've got a light and medium armor. I can burn a feat to get the heavy armor if I so choose. You even have access to shields except for tower shields. And again, now I can have martial weapon proficiency and I can get a weapon focus for free. And I have all these kick-ass spells that I can use. And I can also, by the way, like AOE heal. And again, just amazing stuff that you can do with some of these different um, mysteries. So again, a build will come for each of these. That's not what we're here for. I'm going to fast forward through this part because I want to just get to the part where you actually see the, um, the spell list at level 1 through 9. 
for the cleric side of things. Notice, uh, one last thing here to point out, is the Ancient Lord Keeper and the Seeker, the crappy one that I'll show it to you but I'm not a fan of. None of them get the ability, I don't think, to pick new spells. Everyone gets hit points or skill ranks. The only one that can get new extra, extra spells, which is awesome, is the Oracle, the purest Oracle, which is still cool, and I think that that's uh, a fun idea. Uh, for here, like I said, I'd probably just make myself like a deck space character, and high, high, high charisma. If I'm going undead, you better believe I'm doing something like that. And then strength sucks, con's not going to be existent because, again, I'm going to make it a negative stat because I'll be undead. Uh, and then charisma will be what replaces my HP now, so that'll be a solid, solid hit point character. You get a decent amount of skills, not a bunch if you're not a human, so that's always going to be a thing, hence the, the reason for picking uh, extra skills uh, at level up. But uh, if I were to try to solo, which again I think I will be able to on one of my favorite builds, uh, this would be the way to go. Um, if you're going to solo and you want to be undead, remember go Urthoa. Remember now that take your physique drawback and get your curse. You were cursed, not this curse, different one. You were cursed. And you select a curse in this case, we're selecting undead curse. That's the one that takes your, your con stat, makes it nothing. Now it uses your charisma for your HP and your fortitude saves. And then from here, just pick your stuff. And again, I'm just going to skip all these things because we don't care about this. It's not why we're here. Um, time revelation. You get to pick one of your first. Notice that some are hidden behind the wall of a certain level. Must be achieved as far as Oracle is concerned. And that's cool. Um, but again, knowledge of the ages. Kind of lackluster. Uh, momentary glimpse. Again, solid bonuses. But it's only for one round. You use it a number of times a day. But it's kind of, yeah. Um, and Temporal Clarity is the one that's good the initiative bonuses and it allows you to act even if you're surprised in a surprise round all the time, which is one of my favorites. So I'd pick that one. And then as far as feats are concerned, remember, because you're not human, you have to be an elf for this one, I would definitely take the spell vulnerability of something. I'd probably actually take Transmutation quite because it's divine damage. I like being thematic, even though that would be a massive penalty for me. Uh, but Abjuration is a staple. And then since I'm a deck space character, you know I'm grabbing uh, Weapon Finesse. And if I'm going to go like Undead again, Spell Focused Necromancy, if that's not your thing, maybe you're going to be a Ray Beam Caster. Point Blank Shot is a solid choice. Again, I'm not here to show you feats. That's not what this is about. This is about the spells. So here's your level 1 spell list that you have access to. Notice again, I got Burning Hands for free. Cure Light Wounds for free. Cure Light Wounds would have been on this list otherwise. How do I know that? Because Cure Light or Inflict Light Wounds is here. And again, if I picked Inflict Light Wounds, this would be missing now from the list. And Cure Light Wounds would be here. So you can get both, is my point. So you can do damage, heal undead, which I am undead now. So that's a solid choice for being an undead by doing that. Uh, but there's a lot of really good cleric buffs, which is why you like the cleric spells. Shield of Faith is a solid choice. Ray of Sickening is a necromancy spell, if that's going to be your thing. Uh, fire Belly is from some lame fire protection. Doom is a nice scare tactic uh, for literally making someone shaken for long periods of time. Divine Favor is a solid buff. Bless is a solid buff. Bane is a solid debuff. Again, while you're not going to have access to all these spells, there's a way it's around that, but also you can probably limit your pick to like four or five and be pretty damn happy with the choices that you've made. Because Cause Fear, while good early on, you're not going to care about it later because eventually you outlevel the usefulness of it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, this guy. Good job. Yeah, I'm neutral. Because, no, uh, actually, let's do something different here. Uh, skills, where are you at? Abilities. I'm actually going to take a spell focus necromancy. And I'm not going to pick Urgatho. I'm not going to pick um, any deity. Why? Because I want to be able to make the alignment that I want. Lawful good, chaotic good. Neutral good. I'll pick a good something. I'm always a mere flesh wound. He's always ready. He said so. All right, so we're going to force level the character up to 20 just so we can skip through the spell generation process just so we can see again each spell level of what's available to you. And again, it's mostly buffs. There's a plenty of attack spells in there too. I mean, the Bone Shatter, Bone Shaker series are in here. Those are nice. Uh... I think there's like Death Clutch and whatever in there as well. So there's a, a, a solid smattering, not surprising, of necromancy spells in here. So 
So again, if we just keep going through this slowly, and again, I don't particularly care. But this is where you get the Elven Arcana picks. This is again the reason I love this. Anything from the Wizard list is available to you here. This is the cantrips, obviously. It's not treated as a cantrip, though. It's a level one spell. So don't think you're going to have this or Acid Splash infinite castings a day. No, you get like eight best case scenarios. So it's kind of meh. But again, it's free and I'll take it. Uh, you do have Light already as a cantrip, so I would not grab that one. So just pass on that. And I think you even have Resistance as a cantrip, as a clerical oracle. Uh, but oh, these other ones are unique, I believe. Um, if you want to do a little electric damage, sure, knock yourself out. Flare's kind of fun, especially early levels to blind a target, or at least not blind, excuse me. Um, dazzle a target where they're like a minus one to their swing. Uh, but I would probably either do Acid Splash, Disrupt Undead, Jolt, or Ray of Frost, just because they're cantri or ray spells. So again, whichever you feel like you're missing out on. If I'm going to be honest, I'm an undead monster bastard, I'll probably grab Disrupt Undead. But this one has the progression kind of like a sorcerer in that you don't get any level 2 spells, I don't believe, until level 4. And then every even level thereafter unlocks the next level of spells. Uh, Elven spells, again, level 1 wizard spells cast as a level 2 spell casting, so it'll be in your sp level 2 spell book. Uh, but again, some of these are overlap. We already saw cause fear in our list, so make sure you're paying attention to these things. If you wanted enlarged person, here's your chance. You didn't have that as a cleric. Clerics have better spells than this, but maybe you want grease. Solid choice. You don't have magic, uh, access to magic missile. Now you do, baby. You only get one, though. So again, pick what you want. Ray of Enfeeblement. We already saw Ray of Sickening as a level one cleric spell or oracle spell. So, you know, I would not grab it here is my point. But Snowball's a solid choice. Shield spell is awesome. Yes, you could have a shield in your hands, but why? You know, when I can literally just cast a shield spell, and not only immune to magic missile, but I have a plus four in my armor class for a long period of time. Maybe Snowball's your cup of tea. You're going to be a ray caster anyway, right? So grab Snowball. Beam him in the face of that shit. It does sneak attack damage when you can set that shit up, which will be nice for you. It does damage whether or not they make a save. As long as you hit them, it does damage. Uh, unless, of course, they're immune to cold. There is no spell resistance for it. Another reason that I love it. So again, grab what you feel. But again, I, you know, again if I were to be honest... It would probably be something along the lines of protection or a unique spell that I was not getting access to that really, you know, trivializes certain fights, for instance. I notice you can swap out your old spell picks, so there is that. Uh, but by and large, I usually pick the ones that I want the first time around. It's up to you. Now here's level 2 stuff, okay? I'm not counting our free magic missile one. Again, decent spell list, not all-inclusive. You don't see Cat's Grace on here, for example. But Bone Shaker's here, that's a solid spell pick. Arrow of Law is decent. Aid's kind of meh. But Bull Strength and Bear's Endurance and Eagle Splendor, all that fun stuff is here. Owl's Wisdom as well. You know you're not getting the Intelligence one. The Fox's Cunning is not on the list. Uh, but Effortless Armor, remember you do wear armor, or could wear armor. Your Protection Buffs type spells like Resist Energy are going to be here. Less Restoration Curative spells are in here. There's the summon monster spells 1 through 9 you'll have access to, which is awesome if you wanted to be a conjurer as a cleric. That's a viable option for you. And again, cure spells, which is going to be given to you free, hence the thumbs down category. So if you want the uh, uh, mimicked version, the inflict version, you have to grab it this way. All right. Notice that we got access to, of course, our Scorching Ray and Burning Arc spells now are added to our list thanks to that curse that we just had. So when we get there, you'll see that these two are now on your spell list. And again, those are unique spells that clerics didn't have access to, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, Elven Arcana. Again, level 0, 1, 2, level 2 wizard spells here. And again, we could grab the Scorching Grain stuff, but you see that it's missing from the list because it was given to us free. So they're being kind enough to take it off the list, thank God. Uh, but there's other stuff that we could have grabbed. Acid Arrow, you never had access to that. So there's some really good protection buffs like Blur. Remember, I have the ability to cast Blur, sort of myself anyway but create pit uh, I could get the fox's cunning that I was missing or cat's grace that I was missing I could get frigid touch as a nice melee tech glitter dust is a solid choice web spells gonna be down in here too sends vitals of course if you want to do some sneak attack damage players can't do that shit but this type of oracle can and I love that this is available to us now here's level three stuff sense vitals again for free wasn't on the list at all we're getting our cure serious 
Notice that we have Searing Light as a solid choice. Remove Disease, Remove Curse, Remove Blind is your typical Cleric spells. Well, I would not pick them. I'll show you a way around that. While yes, you have access to them as, as training, and as such, any scroll or wand that you come across for Remove Blindness, Curse, or Disease, you can cast as a level 1 Oracle, which is awesome. Don't use Magic Device needed. But Protection from Energy is a solid buff. Prayer is a solid buff and debuff for the bad guys. Magical Vestment is a solid buff twice because you get carry a shield. Buff the shield and then buff your armor. And then your armor can be something as simple as robes. Still works. And that's awesome. Um, notice that we have some necromancy spells animate dead earlier than the, the wizard would even have access to. That's freaking awesome. And again, some other freaky deaky type buffs and aura effects are going to be common for the cleric. Alright, now we get to our level 4 stuff. First, our level 3 wizard spell stuff. Thanks to Elven Arcana. Laundry list of stuff. Vampiric Touch. Hold on a second. It is available. Not something that the clerics I don't think have access to. Stinking Cloud. Slow spell. I have the spell-like ability coming my way with a slow or haste, so I don't have to take it. But again, if you want more castings today, here you go. Uh, I like uh, Protection from Arrows. I think it's something that the clerics don't have access to. Lightning Bolt and Fireball are definitely something clerics don't normally have access to. Uh, Fly Spell, they don't have access to, but they have something better. So I would not grab that. Greater Magic Weapon is something that's already on the cleric list, as you'll see here in a moment. Heroism, though, is a solid one that I don't think clerics have access to. And that's a solid, solid buff to your swing, your skill checks, all kinds of reasons on Heroism and Greater Heroism. Displacement, again, I can get that as a spell-like ability, like a clickable. Uh, but Battering Blast is something that's pretty damn sweet. And again, if you're going Raycaster, what better Ray than Battering Blast? Well, Hellfire Ray just seemed to be great. You get the point. Point is, it's still a solid, solid choice. Now, let's look at the spells that we have access to at level 4 Cleric stuff, though. Besides our Cure and Inflict spells, some monsters, some in Elementals, some weird stuff, some buffs, again, Restoration, AoE protections. If you're going solo, obviously you avoid these guys because they don't last very long. Well, I'd grab the lesser version, the one that was the level before it, quite frankly. But notice Greater Magic Weapon is here, and again, unlike a Magus, who has the ability to buff their weapon, naturally, or their own arcane weapon enhancement, you don't. So this could actually be quite a boon for you. Uh, but notice that, again, the Divine Power, solid buff, massive plus six uh, luck bonus to your attacks, your damage, your strength check, your strength-based skill checks, which basically means plus six to your athletics check, and temp hit points equal to your caster level, which is just awesome. And a f uh, an extra full attack around, like you have haste on you. And again, that does not stack with haste. That does not stack with speed weapons or greater speed weapons. So this would override those. So be real careful with this one. But this is a solid, solid buff. This is one of the reasons that clerics can just destroy a battlefield. This, as well as righteous might, make them just ungodly murder machines on the battlefield. Notice that we have Dismissal, Death Ward, again, Air Walk, that's their version of Fly, that's better because it lasts longer. Otherwise, it's mostly the same, except for this part here. Uh, for the Fly spell and the Overland Flight spell, it takes half your caster level divided by 2 and adds that to your mobility, so the best would be 10. This one just gives you a flat 10 right off the gate, which is why it's better in my opinion, that and the fact that it lasts longer. But other thing else is the same. These don't have the cute little wings, which is kind of a drag. But this is a solid, solid protection spell. But now we have another wizard spell. Now, this is our level, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, level 4 wizard spell. Notice the list. Pretty inclusive. Stone skin, shout is in here now, rainbow pattern, phantasmal killer stuff that, again, the clerics don't have access to. Obsidian flow for crowd control, greater invis. I can get that from a curse. But if you didn't grab that curse, here you go, baby. We already have Sense Vitals. Why not be invisible and stabby, stabby, stabby? Lots of cool stuff. Your invasion is something that the clerics don't, weirdly don't have access to because they get the Big Brother version of it, which comes later, called Energy Drain. I don't understand why they don't get any invasion, but whatever. But Dragon's Breath, you've been missing out on elemental damage. You see what I'm saying? So again, really cool that they have access to that. Yes, I can get Dimension Door. Why? I already have a Dimension Door-like ability. And I have it multiple times a day where I don't have to use a spell slot to cast it. So, yeah, I guess you could grab it again. Bone Shatter. Again, the Cleric has access to it, as you'll see here in a minute. But again, Acid Pit. Again, a lot of really cool stuff. So again, limited picks, but man, you can make those picks go a long, long way. Now, what did they get for level 5 shit? Yeah, you know, there's that Bone Shatter we were just talking about. 
Now, also, Vine Trap, something that wizards don't have access to. Another paralysis spell that does cold iron damage. That's important for damaging Fae. I'll cast your summon spells, True Seeing, which we have as a spell-like ability coming our way, so we don't necessarily need this one. But again, if you want it, feel free. Spell Resistance, something that the, I don't think the wizards have access to, so this is a nice upgrade. Slay Living, Decent, Righteous Might, that's the one where you basically get big and tanky. It's like enlarged person on crack. You just get bigger, more strength, more con. Obviously, for me, I don't matter because I'm undead, so I have no con, but the penalty of the deck kind of sucks. There's some Natural Armor Enhancement, and some uh, damage reduction against e uh, weapons that aren't evil or weapons that aren't good, depending on your alignment. And again, that gets better over time with the higher caster level you are. Uh, so you have a pretty solid, solid chance to just whoop up on somebody. You have a better reach because you're bigger. You have more damage because your weapon's in a higher category. So a, like a 1d6 weapon becomes like a 1d8 weapon. That's not groundbreaking or anything like that, but it's, it's fun. Uh, you get your typical cleric stuff. You're raised dead. Your flame strike for some finally decent AoE damage of two different damage types, by the way, fire and divine. Disrupting weapons for if you want to like waste, uh, lay waste to undead. Some typical cleric spells as far as cleansing and, and uh, resurrecting things. And constricting coils is another paralysis damaging over time spell. Bone shatter is a solid choice. And again, airwalk communal, not a fan if you're not going to be on a team. But if you are, I'd rather have that than airwalk. But again, on you. I'm not picking spells on purpose, guys. I really am not paying attention at all. So do not use these as your example spells that you should be picking. Uh, no, with the kind of build that I have, that I'm going to end up with an odd number. So I'm not going to end with a 24 charisma, or 22, unless I stop it. Because I'll end up with a 23 if I put all the points in here. So I'm going to put one in dex. Why? Because if I was two-weapon fighting and improved two-weapon fighting, this would allow me to do a greater two-weapon fighting without having to use us uh, an enhancement belt to get me there. So that's okay. And then the other two points can go in here to finish off as a solid 22 charisma. It's the best I can do for you for this type of build since you have to be an elf. But I don't mind. Uh, new Arcana, Ways of Fatigue, got yourself Vampire Shadow Shield, Shadow Evocation would be the one that I'd actually pick because this opens up a, a hell of a lot of utility. Uh, again, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, Shout, Volcanic Storm, and Ice Storm all in one spell. Something that this guy didn't have access to on his Cleric spell list. But there's other stuff in here you could go for. Mind Fog, Icy Prison, different types of pits, uh, different types of paralysis spells. But again, Constricting Coils was something that was available to you as the Cleric side of things. But Icy Prison wasn't. And that's two different types of spells, man, that can lock up targets. Different type of damage as well. Maybe you want to do uh, Cloud Kill, something that the Clerics don't have access to. Acidic Spray, Corn of Cold, Fire Snake, all that shit's applicable here. So again, up to you what you grab. Now let's look at the spells that we have access to at level 6. Um, Undeath to Death, again, nice. Plague Storm, that's a really good one. Uh, we can grab Hellfire Rays, Heal or Harm spells. Now these are not the same as your Cure Moderate, Cure, or uh, Mass Cure Moderate, or your uh, Mass Inflict Moderate Wound spells. So those are different, so those are touch attacks. But remember, I'm undead. For this particular build example and harm spell would actually heal me maximum case scenario that's 150 points of health healed by the end of this build with gear i can get my character up to well over 300 hp imagine tanking like a son of a bitch with your scale fist monk won 19 levels of oracle of the ancient timekeeper oracle that i'm doing right now and being undead they're damaging me eventually and i finally get to the part where after fighting off dozens of trolls my health is down to 150 instead of 300. I cast this on my in combat once, full health again. Just fucking saying. Sounds cool, right? So again, heal would work, of course, if you're not undead, but you get the general gist of what I'm trying to say. Uh, notice that some spells, this is why I went lawful good, I got rid of the Urgothoa, because you can't can't be good if you're doing this. Some spells have a uh, alignment restriction. You have to be good to cast it. You can cast it if you're not good, but trust me, you won't like the result. So this is a decent one. And look at what you get for this decent uh, spell that doesn't last very long but as a buff for a cleric type character. Plus two sacred bonus to armor class. That stacks with all the other different types that you've had up until now, because I don't think there's very few things in the game that give you a sacred bonus to AC. Plus four sacred bonus to strength. Again, stacked with your size bonus to strength, your polymorph bonus to strength, your alchemical bonuses to strength if you did like a vivisectionist dip. Uh, so there's a variety of things that are bonuses to strength. Enhancement bonuses to strength from like bull strength or like a belt of strength. 
and that would stack with that shit. That's another plus four. So this for a strength-based build, you can see the appeal here. Uh, bonus to your uh, persuasion checks uh, when used to intimidate. So again, the corn against smash, shattered defenses, all comes together, just beating the shit out of stuff. Bonus to initiative, and you regenerate damage over time. To uh, fast healing too. That means two health every round. It's not amazing, but it's free healing. Uh, any critical threat roll made against an evil creature automatically confirmed. Just, just bludgeoning damage of hell coming their way because of Eagle Soul. Doesn't last long, but I'd, I'd extend that shit with Meta Magic Rods. Uh, other stuff besides the Banishment, Blade Bear is a solid spell. Uh, Change of Light for a different type of Paralysis spell. Cold Light Strike for a different type of damage. That's an instant cast damage. Uh, swift action, excuse me. Again, lots and lots of stuff you can choose from. And this is not where we're done. Normally the level 6 is where I finish because I usually play Magus builds. We're going all the way to level 9, baby. This is where it gets soups fun because now we have access to all trippy stuff. All right, uh, more skills. Now a new uh, wizard spell. Where are you gonna be? Oh, when I count, we're at level zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is level six wizard stuff now, right? Undeath to death, true seeing, transformation. The San Francisco tree. This one's a maze balls. And again, clerics don't have access to this. This particular build does. This is the one that literally turns you into a fucking fighter. It takes away all your spell casting, even your divine spell casting, sadly. But when you really, really need to hit something, Transform. Your bab goes up to whatever caster or character level you are. So at this level, it'd be 14 for a bab instead of my probably like a, sitting at like a 9 or a 10 right now. So again, we're doing good, but not great. This makes you great. And you just start beating the shit out of stuff. That's awesome. Would recommend that every time. There's other good stuff in here. It kills me not to grab Sirocco or Greater Heroism. Hellfire Ray, we already picked up as the Cleric. But uh, an elemental assessor is available to the cleric side of things, and you'll see too. But disintegrates nice. Circle of death is nice. Change of light was on the cleric side of things, but chain lightning wasn't. Banshee blast wasn't. Acid fog wasn't. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. But again, really hard to pass up something like transformation. Now, what did they have access to though, as the cleric side of things? Well, let me show you, class. Uh, all the different words of chaos, words of law, stuff like that. They're not. That's not how they're all worded. But basically, it's the same principle. It affects things that are uh, non-chaotic, anything that's non-lawful, anything that's not evil, anything that's not new, uh, good. So there's one for each of those categories in here. So again, you have arbitratement, which is uh, something that's basically not true neutral, gets screwed over. Uh, blasphemy is the one that non-evil wants to get screwed over. Uh, dictum is the one where anything that's not lawful gets screwed over. And basically, get the, the general gist. Create a dead, yes, please. Holy word, that was more of the same. Uh, but um, jolting portent for some electrical damage, I said it was in there. Resurrection, greater resto. But my personal favorite, second best favorite, well, favorite, and then there's a, a close runner up. Lesser Miracle. Literally gives you access to a shit ton of spells, level six and lower. Just a retarded amount of spells. Doesn't cost you a damn thing other than to cast it. That's why it's my favorite. The lesser favorite is Lesser Wish, which we will have access to before too long from the wizard side of things. And again, opening up all the wizard spells, level 6 on down, at the cost of 30 diamond dust. That's the difference, though. But that's a solid, solid upgrade right there. Oh, here we go. This is where we get our wizard spell of awesomeness. More charisma. You got charisma. Now, laundry list is here. Of course, Lesser Wish is here. But Umbral Strike, Power Blind is here. I mean, this is definitely what we're grabbing, but uh, we had Caustic Eruption is a solid, amazing damaging spell that you didn't have access to. Uh, we have Kai Shout, Legendary Proportions. This one's actually kind of trippy. Let me just show you that one. Another one where you get big. Size bonus plus six now. Size bonus to Khan, which, again, I'm not a Khan character, but you're double in size. You're not just in large person big you're literally two categories bigger so your weapon upgraded two size categories bigger that's awesome you have dr10 slash adamantine so only adamantine weapon can pierce that 10 so you're always reducing physical damage coming your way because most things don't have adamantine uh, you have not only extra hit points from that extra con presumably you have a better chance to hit thanks to extra strength now you do have a penalty to hit because of your size minus two no less and your armor went down two Notice it doesn't say a damn thing about a uh, penalty to your dexterity, though. That's to your benefit. Notice also you have a uh, natural armor bonus plus six, and that's not natural armor enhancement. That's natural armor. 
that stacks with other forms of natural armor. Other forms of natural armor come from things like the transformation spell um, from Frightening Aspect, which is coming here in a moment. And again, it's a very similar spell to this one. So again, variety of things. So a solid, solid upgrade choice, but sadly, limited wishes right there, baby. And again, access to every wizard spell level six on down for the cost of 30 diamond dust. I'll unload cartloads of diamond dust into my build to make sure I can just cast whatever I'm missing on the fly. That's awesome. Uh, now, level eight stuff that we had access to. Unholy aura. You'll find a lot of auras. Holy aura, unholy aura. And again, decent buffs, unlike things like um, Greater Angelic Aspect or uh, Circles of Protection. These uh, auras are amazeballs for a couple reasons. One, plus four deflection bonus, resistance, and again, like it says right here, unlike protection from evil, it applies to all creatures that are attacking you. So basically, plus four to your armor, plus four to your saves from one spell. And it doesn't last a long time, so there's that. It is AoE, but basically... I think you have to be near you to get the buff. I think like it's a, like you're the central point. Maybe I'm wrong on that where it like casts on you and then everyone gets the buff. But I think it's an aura centered on you. I notice this part here, spell resistance. 25 against evil spells and spells cast by evil creatures. That's important because some spells in the descriptor say evil. Um, and those are usually pretty nasty. Um, Abjuration protects from all mind-affecting spells and effects. I don't know how to test that, but that sounds awesome. And it doesn't say anything about it, whether it's evil or good or anything like that. And then, of course, you basically screw over anything that's evil that does actually, dumb enough to actually hit you, which is pretty sweet. Now, I'm not going to say that that's the best. Storm Bolts is a solid choice. Shield of Law, again, is another one that's just the reverse, but basically uh, against chaotic creatures versus you know, uh, good creatures. And there's one for each of the four alignments, right? So one for good, one for evil, one for law, one for chaotic. So the four different auras in here. Uh, but Death Clutch is an amazing spell. Firestorm is an amazing spell. Frightful Aspect is the one I was telling you just about a moment ago. That's extremely similar to Legendary Proportions. You only get one size category bigger. So Legendary Proportions, you are bigger, bigger. But this one has an aura that makes targets shaking. And if you want to set up something like Shatter Defenses, where everything that's shaking that you're swinging at has got flat-footedness, this here is an amazing spell for that. And again, on a strength-based build, oh mama. DR10 slash magic, not adamantine, magic weapons penetrated. But you have a natural armor bonus, again, not enhancement, bonus. Spell resistance equal to half your caster level plus 10. That's awesome. It's just free shit right there. I'm just saying, this is a really, really nice buff. And again, unlike the other one, lasts for a decent amount of time. You gotta love spells like that. Now, where's my last wizard spell pick? This is my level 8 wizard stuff. Notice our list. Sunburst, Storm Bolts again, Greater Shout, Shadow Evocation Greater, which is the one I'm gonna grab, because again, it unlocks the potential of all kinds of shit for free. Uh, Chain Lightning, Cold Eye Strike, Kai Shout, Soroko, Caustic Eruption, or Elemental Assessor, all in one spell. I get to just pick and choose as I need. Again, on you, but the list is huge. So, Sea Mantle is another viable option for extra armor. If you want a tanky tank, motherfucker, Sea Mantle is the way to go. Polar Ray, if you're going to be a Raycaster, that's a solid spell. Just decent uh, dex damage as well, and solid damage besides. Mind Blank is something I don't think the clerics have access to, so this is a solid choice upgrade, in my opinion. Death Clutch, we already saw, but Horde Wolfing wasn't on their list, and that's a solid upgrade for a spell. Just massive damage to stuff. Just, again, there's no wrong answer here. Just pick what makes sense to you and move on. Notice for the level 9 stuff, you don't got much. Notice there's no healing spells, not counting mass heal. Surprised that we don't have mass harm. I guess that was probably overkill. But this is a solid, you know, for a healing spell, holy shit. If you want to damage some undead, good lord, man, that's some solid damage to undead right there. Uh, let's see, we have Energy Drain, this is the one that, like I said, it's weird that they don't have Innervation, but they have this one. This is the bigger version of Energy, uh, Innervation. Instead of 1d4 of negative levels, it's 2d4. And it does last for 24 hours, not that it matters for you, because you're going to never zap somebody and walk away for 24 goddamn hours. You're just going to kill them. But, solid, solid penalty for negative levels. Uh, mass Heal, Overwhelming Presence for basically, uh, scaring the shit out of everybody that's enemies anyway. Solid, solid spell, in my opinion. Wisdom Grain, besides, really sets them up nicely. Polar Midnight, I keep confusing with Polar Ray, but Polar Midnight's the bigger version, like AoE version, and it's damage over time. Every round, this amount of damage and some dex penalty. 
but a successful fortitude negates the dexterity damage, but not the cold damage. So again, still solid, solid damage every round you're in it. Um, summon Monster 9, best version of it, obviously. Again, a limited list, but that's all I really wanted to show you here today. And I know that video still has been plenty long, guys. More to come. Uh, the other ones will be actual videos on the oracles. And a last note here, uh, as a, uh, not an apology per se, but for misleading you into thinking that I was going to be posting a video on the uh, Arcade Trickster, uh, where I was going to be the uh, Elder Archer. It's a solid build. I still stand by it. I haven't uploaded the video because I don't like it for what you wanted. Uh, Guidex, this is for a specific viewer. Um, it worked for me, and the reason it worked for me is because I'm not going to take it solo. I was going to be on a team. Because I was always on a team, I was getting sneak attack damage because they were uh, flanking them. They had two uh, front runners in the team tanking it up for me, keeping the bad guys off of me, corralling them up and flanking them, and I was just peppering them with arrows and just sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack. It was just amazing. So for me and my type of play style, it worked beautifully. But for what you were looking for, a solo build, it made no sense. So I'm not going to post it unless, again, someone specifically says, hey, I really would like to see that. It's nothing really amazing. Uh, just know that it, you're basically going uh, one level of Rogue. You're going uh, nine levels of um, Eldritch Archer, which is a specific subclass of Magus. And then you were going ten levels of Arcane Trickster. Not in that order, obviously. Arcane Trickster as soon as you can. But uh, you could cast spells through your bow, ray spells particularly, the more I thought about it, though, and the more I read on forums, the more I realized that's a dumb idea. Uh, the reason you want to cast weapons or spells through your weapons is, is for, like, the other magi, where they can cast it through their melee weapon, let's say, and shock them with a shocking grasp at the same time. It's because if the weapon crits, your spell crits. Well, the same is applicable for the bow. Yeah, but the bows have crappy crit ranges. So you're not crit fishing like you should be. And there's one or two exceptions to the rule. Like there's some there like have a 19, 20 crit range. Or you can use like a crossbow, for instance. So there's that. But eh, I'd rather get rapid shot, mini shot, deadly aim, shit like that. And you cluster shots. And again, I could fit that in that build. And that's really the, the crux of the build right there. I don't even think I got the point blank shot and precise shot, quite frankly. But you didn't really need it. You had a shit ton of dexterity, massive intelligence. And again, with the right bow... And armor, because you can wear light and eventually medium armor and still cast all your spells and buff up besides. You had a solid, solid armor class. You could solo it, I suppose, but you're not getting all the sneak attack love then without getting like pets out. And again, you could do that. But again, you're always doing that. And it's like, oh, some of the pets, there goes the pets, there goes my sneak attack bow attack. I would just rather have it on a team. Let the team do their thing, and you're just sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack like crazy with your bow shots. And there's a specific bow in particular called the Mirror Bow. Now, I'm sure it's the end of the game build. But if you can get it, holy hell. Every time you land a hit with your regular bow shot, a mirror arrow splits off of it and also rolls and shoots that target. And if you have sneak attack, guess what? Those can sneak attack too. So you just went from like four to five attacks a round to like eight to ten attacks around and all of them can sneak attack that's why i like the build but again it wasn't your play style buddy so i'm not gonna bore you with it if anyone wants to see it though i'll happily post it later but let me do the, all these oracle ones first and again there's a lot to do here with that though my name is brother me please like subscribe comment down below tell me what you guys think i'll see you soon bye now